right, so it uh, looks like I'm going to paint with a pencil today and draw a straight line. <laughs> That's really a straight line. And uh, uh, then I'm going to try and figure out where to draw a squiggly line. That's a squiggly line. This is going to be some yellow here. Yeah, I know it doesn't look yellow, but it will in a, just a minute because I'm going to add some water and trip that everywhere. You see that? But I'm going to wipe it off with a towel because really I just add paint with a brush and then I paint with a paper towel. And I know it's a little blurry there. You can't really see that. That's okay. There's not much to see. It's a streak of paint. What I'm doing there is I'm actually cleaning up a screw up because you see all the color in that towel. They're breaching the towel and getting onto the canvas. That's always fun. Uh, that's a reddish orange. And that's lovely because um, it actually blends really nice in there. And yeah, it's blurry, but you can't see that. All right, so I'm just gonna keep scribbling in this paint. And uh, I don't know why uh, I'm actually smoothing that out because I'm gonna actually add more paint above that and smooth it all out together. So as you can see, I've definitely mastered this absolutely incredible linear technique of just going back and forth. You gotta run away a drip right there. You can't let that happen. That'll ruin everything. So that's why you wanna keep those clean towels. Again, I repeat and recommend use clean towels. Look at that. It takes a while to master that. You have to go just bang and forth. So now before I ruin anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and tackle and put the blue in. So I put the blue in and I try to meet in the middle with some kind of red or purple so that I don't get green in the sky because blue and yellow <laughs> make green. See, look at that drip. Oh, okay. So now I've got a big old line there of, uh, we're going to call that sunshine. Oh no, we're not. We're going to rub it in there. There we go. Pretend like I meant to do that. So that's my eraser fluid, also known as water. Even though these are not watercolors, it is an acrylic. It dilutes in water. Okay. Now what you can see is, um, it looks like basically I've colored a rainbow in the sky, which is pretty much what it is. It's probably not even in the right order, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and keep going here with the uh, blue in the sky. I'm not going to list all the colors for you. You can just figure it out and put whatever colors you want. And no matter what color you decide to use, it'll be perfect because it's your painting and it can be whatever you want. It's your perspective, which is an important thing for artists to have. So I'm going ahead and uh, I'm overlapping a little bit of a purple over that blue to bring into that reddish and um, like magenta. That way that the colors blend together nicely in the sky without looking like there might be a hue of green in there. I've done that a few times. And um, as you can see that drip coming down, um, I try and pick it up as I get paint. You know, it's a little bit harder. This is a canvas, a hard canvas. Now uh, you can see I got a little sloppy there. It's okay. We're going to cover that up with a darker color. So I'm not going to worry about that. So now I'm just kind of using whatever little res residual color I have there to bring it down in the painting further. So. This is now the water and the reflection. And if you think about reflections, you can kind of see how I'm going off at the, uh, like a mirror image of the angle of the sky that I was going. So where I have the linear strokes going from the mid right side to the upper left corner, I now have the opposing going down to the left bottom corner. Now I'm just going to bring that purple in there and smash that brush everywhere all over the place because why not? I can, and uh, I'm going to cover it with some darker stuff anyway. Now. Do you see what I'm doing here? I have a white strip there. I'm gonna be very careful to not mix blue and purple with yellow. So I'm bringing in a little bit of my red there and then I can blend it from the bottom into the purple. It looks like a little bit too much of that red up top. And I don't want too orangey right there. And all I'm doing is going from the top and sweeping left and right and pushing the pigment down into the canvas. You see the dripping? I let that work to my advantage. That's water. Let it be wet. If it's too dry, it won't look wet. I know that's very basic, isn't it? So don't care. That's going to be land on the right side, but I can take some of that out and uh, those streaks end up being natural like waveforms and water and motion. So I'm leaving those darker undertones there. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a straight line again with some darker color. And that doesn't look straight, so now I'm going to try and fix that. 
I'm just letting all those drips go. And we're gonna go ahead and try and do a steady hand and uh, getting a sneak peek at my hair. Look at those grays, beautiful. Oh yeah, and there we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna borrow that color, that purple from the line that I just made. And I'm just gonna let it be and use that and pull it from the back to the front. As you get closer, it gets lighter. So far away is dark, up close is lighter. So you can just do that by diluting the water or diluting the paint as you come forward. Now I have those drips that came in. I'm gonna fix that. So now I'm coming in with a lighter purple over where I was just at, even over that orange, because I want that dark in the back and a hint of an orange, orange undertone with some blues and the purples, like what's in the sky. So basically I'm just throwing in a whole bunch of color here, just to kind of get to a point where my eyes feel like that's kind of a reflection. And when I'm satisfied, I can go back and make any minor adjustments that I have in there. Do you even know how to paint? What are you doing here? Oh, it's okay. Look at that. I meant to do that. So now um, we're gonna come back up and do some, a little bit of a, an interesting blue that's dripping. And that's where I'm like, oh crap. You better fix that. You better fix that girl. Now I'm gonna play it cool like I meant to do that. Oh wow, look, it looks like a cloud. Isn't that lovely? And I'm gonna let my eyes just adjust to that for a minute and see if I like it. Sometimes happy accidents happen. And I'm like, wow, I couldn't have planned that any better. But sometimes you really mess up things. And let's see how I handle this. Um, I'm gonna try and blur it out because it's on a canvas. Hard canvas is a little bit more forgiving than a watercolor paper, let me tell you that for sure. Oh, I decided to go ahead and fluff it up like the clouds. I did like a little bit of what it was doing. And so I must have said, yeah, I need some more of that. And my brain said, get a dry brush and swirl it around a bunch of times. And it'll look like a fluffy cloud. So I did. Fluffy, fluffy, fluff, fluff. Like cotton ball blotting. That's what I imagine. That I just blot, lift, little tappy tap. This is a green and uh, I'm coming in from the back because I want to add those in in a variety of places. I don't want them to cluster. I just want a little peek. And I can still see the pencil line from where I originally wanted to have the shore. And so I'm going to decide where I want that shoreline to come out. I'm following that squiggly line. I'm trying to see it I, it's somewhere in there like that. Yeah, that's cool. So now I know where that shoreline is. And basically, I don't want to waste the paint in my water. So I'm going to scribble all over the place, which is very freeing to just scribble, scribble purposefully and really not care where that paint goes. That's fun. I just want to make sure that my line is very dark and some places to give uh, a little bit of a, an effect. Now this is straight line for the horizon. Also making that darker and that's free handing. Let's get in focus there so you can see what that looks like. Okay, can I go back and make sure that these are all nice and dark? Okay, this is a slanted brush. That's what makes it so easy. It really is. They're very versatile. I love them. Um, so I just scribble, scribble. Remember, keeping in mind, further away is dark. And then, you know, everywhere there's a little bit of brush. There's a little bit of a dark base. So I take the leftover paint and I can put it at the base of where the dark green is. There's still gaps. And in those spots, I'm going to put different colors to represent the different colors of the foliage. It gives it a more realistic approach. And basically, the lighting... In the picture, it was gray with kind of like a light reflection on a white rope. I know that to be true, but that's not what I see in the picture. What I see in the picture is a little bit of gray and some purple and some blue 
and it looks like a little bit of a green. So I see all those and I bring them out in those different ways with different depths of color and the light. So now I'm adding like a blue, almost a bluish gray. And that's like almost like a moonlight reflection on whatever is on the ground, netting. So you can see that now as a close-up. Very interesting combination with this blue. It's a it's dark, really dark black blue. It's actually starting to have some nice, having nice depth here. So this is a very light, almost baby blue. Not something I would normally think to put in this. And I'm putting it on like I would tap little flowers. But I just want to give that indication that the color is there. And it's just tapping along nicely. Just putting it in little areas where I've missed putting pigment. And as you can see, just adding more reflection, the moonlight. And as it goes towards the back, you see smaller and smaller and few and few, which indicate distance. Now, there's a couple of brush and trees and things growing. And so we're gonna add those in with a fine line, a liner brush and some watered down acrylic. And it's, it could be tricky to try and get the right consistency, but once you figure out the appropriate match for the canvas and the paint you're working with, stick with that consistency. So work small, don't do the big ones first, do the small ones, the little test areas, which is why I'm working in the back. It'll be a little easier to cover when it's back there. And so I just take that liner brush and if you can see my pinky's on the canvas, I use it as a guide. Sometimes I've taken paint from the edge of where the tape is and accidentally drug it into the painting. So in here, I'm just tapping in a little bit of leaves in the dark. I think I like doing these night sky visions because they're, they're easier. All the trees, all the brush, they're all just dark, whatever dark color I want. So here we are doing some more brush, some more little things that are growing. And sometimes you can just see, I just kind of roll. It's a very subtle movement, but I roll that brush almost in a twisting fashion, like a, a quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn. It's just a roll. And that helps elongate uh, the line. So the more that I roll, the longer the paint strip will go, depending on the consistency. So you can play with that. And it's important to know how you paint and try different techniques. And the best advice I ever received, paint what you see, not what you think you see. So sometimes there's little, little things, there's brush and there's other, there's bushes and all that stuff in forefront here. So I'm adding those in and a couple more tree branches that are poking through. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and finish out adding a couple more little trees there and uh, just making sure adding little details, nice little fine details in the back and as you can see, the little small details of the tiny little edge of the water, the brush and the twigs just out there. It's important those details be represented. Look at that. And this is a point where I hope I don't drag that finger right through that blue and muck up all that painting, especially when this is an acrylic. Um, even just little, little, little sprigs right there. Make it come to life. It's pretty nice. Okay. So I'm just going back in and tapping through, making sure I've got a little bit of coverage in there. I think with a little bit of purple here. I don't know. I think I'm just adding things now until my brain says, yeah, that looks good because I will overdo it in a heartbeat and add more and more. So I have to work in small increments and let my brain see the picture and say, is that done brain? And my brain says, no, add more. And then I have to say, brain, wait a minute, dude. Let's think this through. If we do that, will you ruin it? And my brain thinks about it. And that's what's happening in my brain right now as I'm tapping. Yeah, that's really, that looks like it's going to be a good thing. All right, so now I'm gonna sign. Now, 
I read recently that artists, it's not typical to sign with a year on the front. And, uh, but I've been doing that ever since I started painting. So I'm going to continue to do that. It's my art. I'll do what I want. So, this piece is called Carrie's Walk on the Shore at Bones in Scotland. Thank you, Carrie. It's a beautiful piece. Very inspiring. And at this point, as I'm signing it and taking the tape off, I'm usually grateful that I haven't screwed it up at this point. Once I've signed my piece, I am not allowed to touch it with a paintbrush anymore. Now, there are some times when this doesn't work out, such as taping a hard canvas is not very clean cut edge, as you can see. Let's paint those white edges black. Okay, so let's do this. Let's freehand that, baby. Oh yeah, look at that. And I'm holding on to that painting like, dear life, make sure I don't mess it up. All right, here we go. Straight line. You can do it. Oh, oh, let that paint flow, relax. Let it go. Okay, yeah, and oh, so satisfying. Look at that, beautiful. Whew. Now I can breathe. Okay, I'll scribble all that in. Mm -hmm. Good job. And scribble all that in, that's fine. Whew. As long as I got the line okay. But don't, don't go too fast. Okay, remember, red paint, still wet. Blue paint, still wet. Black paint, still wet. Okay, look at how satisfying that is. Beautiful. Oh, oh yeah. Once you start doing that, it's, it's really stress relief. For me, having it work like that in the smooth line, even though, you know, sometimes it's a little wavy, in just having a nice block like that, is quite satisfying to me. I like it. Crisp, clean lines. Here we go again. Okay, here we go. Two more sides to go. Come on, baby. Don't let me down. You got this. You got this. Come on. All right. Good. Refuel. Go back. Gentle. Gentle. Uh-oh, you jumped it. I think I don't care. Scoot it on down. Scoot it on down. Okay, good, excellent, right there, okay, good, 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 and excellent. Now, last side, and look at that, it was really messed up, because I hit it hard going on the left swipe, here we go, I really try and watch the feed and the bead of the paint, and make sure that I allow it to just naturally push its own line. Try and work with things. Instead of forcing them to do your bidding, watch how they do it normally, naturally. How does paint flow from a brush when you push on it in certain ways? Or if you just let it flow, sometimes the least amount of control can produce the best results. And there we have it. As you can see, a little close up, there we go. Well done, excellent. And you can do that too. Thank you.